In this video, we're going to be learning about one of the coolest features in Sketch, which is Symbols. Symbols is a powerful feature in Sketch that allows you to reuse elements throughout your design. What makes Symbols truly great is that you can make a change to the master layer and have those changes propagate to all artboards and pages in your entire document. Let's take a look at them in action. Let's go ahead and first create a button. I'm going to insert a rounded rectangle and I'm going to change the border to be nothing and add a fill of blue. And now I'm going to add just a light shadow. Now let's insert some text. Great, we now have a button. Let's turn this button into a symbol. We can select both layers by clicking and dragging or selecting in our layers. And now we can click create symbol in the toolbar. Now we're going to see a dialog that allows us to name our symbol. We also see a checkbox that says send symbol to symbols page. Now this checkbox is automatically going to create a symbols page for you, which will include the master layer for this symbol. Now you don't have to have this checked and you can leave your master layer on your document if you'd like. For this example, we're going to be creating the symbols page. Let's go ahead and give the symbol a name of button. I can click OK. And as you can see by the syncing arrows in the layers, we now have a symbol. Let's go ahead and see how easy it is to insert a symbol. I can do so by saying insert symbol and let's select a button. From here, we have a button attached to our cursor. It's going to place wherever we click it. So when I click the cursor, we now have another instance of this button. Let's go ahead and update the master layer for this symbol so we can see its changes in action. What we can do is double click on either of these symbol instances and it's going to take us to the master symbol. Now this right now is in the symbols page, which is just a standard page in our document. We can actually get to the same page by browsing to page and then selecting symbols. Now let's go ahead and change the background color to red. I'm going to select the fill and just change the color to red. Now I'm going to click return to instance and you'll notice both buttons are now red instantly. So by making that change to the master layer, both instances on the canvas have been updated automatically. When working in larger complex documents, symbols really comes into its own. Let's go ahead and check out an example where symbols can really help you out. Looking at this artboard, you can see we have several repeating elements. For instance, each one of these people in this list follow the same design patterns despite having different data. Now without symbols, we'd have to update each of these individually, which could become really time consuming, especially over the course of a large project. When symbols feature a text layer, you can actually update that text layer without updating the symbol itself. As you can see here, each one of these cells is an individual symbol. When I select the symbol, we can see we now have an override section where we can update or modify the text. Let's go ahead and select the second one and you'll notice it doesn't currently have any overrides. This is because this is using the default data from the symbol itself. Let's go ahead and add some overrides here. For name, I'm just going to add the name Scott Tolinsky. Upon hitting enter, you can see that the layer itself has updated, however the master symbol has not. And text overrides aren't the only thing you can do, you can also override bitmap images. Anywhere that an image is used as a fill for a background, we now have the option to update this image. Let's check out the master symbol. Inside here, you can see that we have nothing special, just some basic text layers. You can actually override images too. All you need is a layer with an image fill in the master. Let's go ahead and select this particular instance now and try to update this image. We can add a new image simply by clicking choose image or dragging a photo right into the well. You can see upon updating that, we have our image updated in this particular instance without modifying the actual symbol itself. This is a great way for repeating cells that require the same design but may feature a different image such as an avatar. To see symbols in action once more, let's say we didn't like this text color here. We wanted to go with something more neutral. Let's go ahead and select this symbol. We can select this text. Now let's change the color. I'm going to just make it a dark gray here. Now let's return to our instance. And as you can see, it's instantly been updated through each of these cells without changing the overridden text itself. If you'd like to unlock the power of symbols, you can also place symbols inside of other symbols. By combining basic components, this way you can save yourself a lot of work. Let's say we have an icon here. And in this icon, we need to include this in the toolbar. As you can see here, 
To the side of the document we have the symbol master layer. So we can access the symbol master layer just by selecting the mailbox here. If you'll notice in our master layer we have some hidden layers here. Let's go ahead and turn them on. And as you can see, wherever the symbol is used, either in the toolbar here itself, which is a symbol, or just on its own as a symbol, the symbol has been updated everywhere. You can even exclude its properties too, with overrides. It's that simple.